I love spending time with you. It doesn't matter where we are. As long as I'm with you, I'm happy. So that was a little note written to me by my husband on the Valentine's Day right before we got married in 2013. It means a lot to me because my husband has never been big on elaborate sentiments of expression and um, big Valentine's Days at all. Uh, so this is something that I'll cherish forever. I have it on my bulletin board at work, um, and it means a lot to me. Dear Hannah, I took and hopefully passed my final final of ever. I'm finished with my cor coursework. No more degrees for me. This is it, and unlike Lot's wife, I ain't turning back. So that is from a friend of mine named Haley, and she's about to graduate with her doctor's degree in audiology. And um, the reason I know that is not because I see her or because I talk to her on the phone or because I'm friends with her on Facebook. We are legit pen pals. We only communicate through pen and paper. Um, I look forward to getting her letters, and she looks forward to getting mine. Um, and it's amazing what that anticipation of what's going on in her life um, and checking the mail, how much joy that brings me. Dear Hannah, happy birthday. Here's your card. <clears throat> So that was from my sister for my birthday last year. Um, she's a very simple woman. Um, she's not a feeler. She doesn't have, you know, a lot of outlet for expression. She just doesn't really do that. Um, so that was a card that she gave me just to check off the I gave my sister a birthday card card. Dear Hannah, I wish I could find the words to tell you how great it is to be the parent of a daughter like you. Oh, mercy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so that's from my dad. And he sent me this card randomly for no reason last year. I have no idea why. Um, and in fact, my parents came in like five minutes ago to surprise me to hear me speak. And I sent them away so that I would not do this. Um, cry on stage. Um, but my dad is a very special person to me. If you haven't already figured this out, I am a deep feeler. It's really pathetic sometimes. Um, how I choose to express myself, though, is through written word. Um, and it's for that reason last year that I started my very own small greeting card business. Um, so small, it's probably not even significant enough to mention. Um, but that's something that I would love to see grow and grow as time goes on. Um, and I want to tell you why. Greeting cards are powerful. Uh, but I don't want you to take my word for it. I have a few stories that I brought with me to share with you. Dear Dad, I know our relationship has changed now that I have a new provider in my life, but no matter what, I will always be Daddy's little girl. So that speaks to me, and I didn't even write it. Um, this is a card that my boss actually shared with me. When I asked him about a card that was meaningful to him, um, he pulled this at the top of the stack, and um, this is a card that his daughter wrote to him whenever she was right right after she got married for Father's Day. Um, and it's full of a lot of really sweet sentiments and things like that. Um, and it's something that stuck with him all these years. Um, he also told me another story. When his dad passed away and joined his mom in heaven, he was cleaning out his dad's house, and he came across a pile of cards that he didn't know existed. Um, and he was looking through them, and he realized that his dad had kept every single birthday card his mom had ever given him since the day they got married in 1945. That is a ton of cards. Um, and I won't lie, when I got married in 2013, I kind of expected uh, my husband to do the same. You know, I gave him a ton of cards when we first got married, and I was surprised to see that, you know, when he would open it, he would sit it down in the kitchen, and it would stay there for like two weeks. He wouldn't move it at all. Um, or it would sit on a coffee table, or it would sit in our bedroom. It became a joke after a little while. I started moving them around and putting them in the refrigerator or moving them in places. And I'd ask him, like, hey, where's that card? Did you, where's that card? Did you notice that I moved it? And he would never notice that I moved it because he wasn't paying attention. Um, and I, I was like, Taylor, it seems like you don't care. Like, I'm giving you these cards. Why don't you care? Um, and he sat me down and he said, Hannah, just because I'm not putting it on a bulletin board or framing it doesn't mean that in those moments that I was reading it that it made me feel like the most special person in the world. And I was like, oh, you're right, I'm sorry. I'll keep giving you cards. Like, I'm really sorry. And so now it's just kind of an understanding. I know that when I give him a card, he might stick it on a table or he might not know where it is in two minutes, but it made him feel really special in that moment. And that's something that's really, I guess, good to know is that when you give a person a card, they're going to feel different ways about it. Some people frame cards. Some people save cards. Um, but what's going to happen is it's going to make them feel really special in that moment. Um, it might not change their life, but it has the power to really affect someone's 
heart or attitude or perspective on a situation right then. <clears throat> okay. Dear friend, take care and rest in the Lord's comforting arms. He will provide for all your needs. This was a car that my secretary actually shared with me. Um, over Christmas break, her and her family were involved in a really serious car accident. Uh, it's by the grace of God that she's alive today. She broke her neck in two places that should have killed her but didn't. Um, she was in the hospital. One of her daughters was in the hospital. Her husband broke his ankle. Her daughter had a concussion. It was a nightmare. Um, and I was asking her about all of this, being in the hospital and how that felt and um, what her family was going through. And something that she said that was helpful was cards getting cards from people, people she didn't know, people she'd never met. Her story just kind of spread, and people were sending in cards of sentiment, expressing their condolences and saying that they were praying for her. Um, and this was one that stuck out to, her, out to her by a really good friend. Um, and she, she kept those cards, and they just mean a lot to her. So my dad, uh, and this is the reason I sent my parents away, my dad was diagnosed with cancer in 2003 and again in 2012, um, he's in remission now, uh, but this is a card that he actually shared with me when I was talking to him about it. It says, Dear Ricky, no mush, no gush, just a cheer up, and if you're not in the mood, don't open cards for me. And I just thought that was so great. Um, he, he shared this with me because it stuck out to him. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't sympathetic. It wasn't um, mushy. It wasn't a long soliloquy of pain and sorrow and I'm so sad for you. Uh, this is exactly the kind of card that spoke to him. Um, he talked a lot about uh, just cars in general. Uh, the second time he got cancer, he actually put up a, a hope wall, he called it, in our den. He covered a wall with all these cards that he was getting from people because they meant so much to him. He mentioned to me that before he got cancer, he didn't really send cards that much. And I said, Dad, why do you send them now? And he says, simply, because I know how it feels to get them. It meant so much to him going through that and knowing that people were taking the time to write something and just saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. Hey, I'm praying about you. He, you know, cancer sucks. It's, it's not good. You don't feel good. Nothing tastes good. You can't eat. Just not good. But how horrible it was, something like this made a difference. <clears throat> so I saw a friend of mine at church um, a couple weeks ago, and I... His name is Second Lieutenant Eric Ramsey. He joined the uh, Army National Guard, and he's been deployed for a while. He came back for a week, um, and I asked him about cards, and here's what he had to say about that. What communication via electronic means is limited. A person can start to have feelings that you're forgotten. A lot of times it seems like life just goes on for civilians, and service our military men and women are doing seems unimportant or taken for granted. When you get cards or letters, it lets you know that people are thinking about you and appreciate the job you're doing. Whether it's problems they're having with the microwave or just other daily routines or occurrences that are going on, those letters are the ones that make you feel like you're being included in their lives. Um, I've never sent a card to one of our servicemen or women. I've never done that, and it makes me sad that I've never done that. I'm sure there have been opportunities for me to do that, uh, but this spoke to me, just how, how simple something about talking about a problem with a microwave can make somebody feel like they're being included and, and um, that you care about what they're doing and you care about the service that they're giving. Uh, Dr. McCarty told me a story recently of a card that he wrote to somebody about 10 years ago. Um, it was a family friend, and she was struggling with something in her life uh, that had happened in her childhood, and that kind of carried over into adulthood. Um, and he saw her 10 years later, uh, and he said when, when he saw her, she pulled out this old tattered letter that he had written to her, and she said that she must have read it a thousand times, and that there were times when that letter was her lifeline and the only thing that got her through this hard time that she was going through. He said he was in awe of how something so little made a difference in someone's life. And he wondered why he hadn't been doing that all along, doing something so simple that could really make a difference. Uh, yesterday, I spent the day in a Chicago airport trying to make my way back here. And I randomly turned around to the woman uh, behind me. I was kind of going over my notes for this presentation. And I said, hey, can I ask you something? Do you think that cards are important? She was like, excuse me? <laughs> I said, do you think that greeting cards matter? Do you think, you know, do they matter in your life at all? And she said, yeah, they matter. Um, she Recently, she said she was cleaning out her stuff from her parents' house, and she came across a box of cards that she had kept throughout her lifetime that she had forgotten about. And she opened them up, and she started reading, and she said it was like opening a time capsule. I was flashed back to these moments in my life where I was struggling, and I was reminded of all these people who reached out to me and wanted to make me feel special or encourage me in, an, in, a, in a bad time in my life. 
Um, that's something interesting too, is that you might send a card to someone and it might help them then, but they might save it or they might remember it later on. Or they might open it 10 years down the road and really be encouraged again by what he had said previously. It's, I mean, it's just continuous encouragement and you never know where it's going to go. Um, I was talking to one of my professors one day after class and in grad school um, and he was telling me that uh, any card that he gets from a student he saves um, and when he's having a bad day or when he's uh, just not feeling well about himself or him as a professor he pulls out that drawer of cards and he reads it and it's again continuous encouragement that people had given to him have you ever thought to thank your professors about their guidance or um, or their counsel to you or in any way because um, I know a lot of people who save that kind of stuff and it means something to them for a longer time. Um, raise your hand, please, if you can think of somebody right now who needs encouragement off the top of your head. Now raise your hand if you know a person in the world at all. At all. Every hand. The thing about encouragement is every person needs encouragement. And sometimes they don't even realize that they need encouragement. And something as simple as a card can really make a difference. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a card. It can be a greeting post-it or a greeting sonic cup or foggy mirror message. Or it doesn't even matter what it is. Greeting cards are powerful. But encouragement to another human being is immeasurably, unimaginably powerful as well. Um, something that I think about uh, when I get a card in the mail is the journey that it took to get here, or to get to me. I think about uh, the person who took the time to wrote it, obviously. But I think about uh, the person who picks it up at the post office and sends it on to the next post office. And I think about all the hands that touch it and move it along to get to me. Um, and I think about you know, the person who puts it on the mail truck. And I think about the mail person who takes that card and brings it up to my house and puts it in my mailbox for me to get. It took two minutes for the person to write it. it took a bit of a journey to get to me it took about two seconds to read but it was probably the happiest two seconds of my entire day so my message to you is dear students take the time and create the happiest two seconds of somebody's day thank you <laughs>